What it is, though? It's your boy, Crook, LDBT100. We in hit show. And today we got another reaction video. This is coming from the one and only Jimmy Hyrule. You feel what I'm saying? This is when you're the best player in the NBA, but nobody cares. I think we kind of already know who this is talking about. This is talking about Nikolai Jokic. You know what I'm saying? So. We're going to see what this boy have to say real quick. Thank you guys for watching. Continue to make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. We are almost 16 subs away from 600, man. Let's like, comment, and subscribe. Support for your boy if you enjoy the content. Link will be in the description for all of my social medias. Without further ado, let's get right into it. I want to hear what this man got to say. Three letters that sum up excellence, dominance, competitiveness, and the spirit of winning. The NBA's most valuable player award is the highest individual achievement a player can accomplish in their career. Out of the tens of thousands of players to lace up in the NBA, only 35 have won a regular season MVP. But what exactly does value mean when assessing the league's most valuable player? Some would say it's leading your team to victory night in and night out. Others may say it's displaying your dominance through sheer numbers, points, rebounds, assists, that type of thing. You could even argue that a player's value comes in the form of his mere presence, the intangibles that don't show up in the numbers. But however you look at it, one thing is certain. Nikola Jokic has been the most valuable NBA player so far this season, and the gap between him and the next guy isn't even close. Today's video is sponsored by Ray. I don't know because over at Ray sometimes I be feeling like I be feeling like MVP. All I sh all I should is just a, a popularity contest, bro. I'm gonna be honest. In 1997, nearing so, the end no, of his sometimes days it just be a popularity Michael contest. Jordan had reached legendary because if that was the case, court. if that was the case, that one year that Russell Westbrook averaged a triple double, he did the same thing the next time. Why didn't he win it then? You get what I mean? Like, like something. Yeah, it's be a popular. He was widely sometimes. recognized as not only the best like player the basketball the gods above or the people that run the NBA, bro. They pick and choose who they want to have MVP, bro. Come on now, because there's no way to dictate who gets MVP. Every year, you gonna get the same people: Giannis, Braun, KD, Harden, Steph, Dame Lillard. Jokic and B, like you get all these people that put up all these numbers, but how do you really dictate who gets MVP? You can, bro. They already got it in their mind the on who they want. Of all time, and the man wasn't even done yet. He led the league in scoring, averaging nearly 30 points per game on ridiculous efficiency. He made first team all defense, and he led the Bulls to 69 wins, easily the best record in the NBA that season. With weeks left in the season, the MVP award was all but his. Congratulations for enormous achievement, but congratulations, Carl Malone, 1996-97, NBA Most Valuable Player. At least he thought the MVP award was his. But instead, the award went to Carl Malone, a decision that to this day, Michael Jordan can't believe actually happened. Everyone in the league knew Michael was the best and most valuable player. It was obvious. So how could even the greatest player to ever play the game get robbed out of an award that was rightfully his? Well, there's a few reasons. One being voter fatigue. Seeing the same player dominate year after year can get tiring. Voters will go out of their way to justify rewarding anyone other than the other guy than the who player. is always rewarded. You can't do that, bro. Greatness is greatness. Narratives. More often than not, storylines, whether accurate or not, manifest themselves in the minds of voters and fans throughout the season, and these storylines tend to outweigh actual results. And no matter how much we try to stay objective on these matters, subjective narratives are bound to have an effect on all of us, even in the case of Michael Jordan. But Mike isn't the only player to get robbed out of an MVP. In 1961, Wilt Chamberlain averaged 50 points and nearly 26 rebounds a game while leading his team to the third best record in the NBA. And he didn't win the regular season MVP. In 2006, Kobe Bryant put together one of the greatest individual seasons this century, featuring his iconic 81 point game and a 40 bomb every other night. The man finished fourth in MVP voting that season. But in Kobe's case, he suffered from what many other MVP candidates before him and after him have suffered from, a not so great record. 
See, in the 2006 season, the Lakers finished as the seventh seed in the West, a playoff team, but nowhere near the top seed. And in the NBA, there's a bit of an unwritten rule that if a player has hopes of winning the MVP, his team must be one of the winningest teams in the league. The standard yeah. almost always being no yeah, worse than be at least the third top seed four. in their given conference. Throughout the history of the modern NBA, only four MVP winners finished the season with a team seated lower than second. And only one player has won the regular season MVP with a team seed lower than third. Oh, Westbrook. That player being Russell Westbrook in 2017. Okay. In that season, Westbrook was a very rare exception to the rule. In fact, so far, he's been the only exception to the rule. The first player in over 50 years to average a triple-double for an entire season. A feat that everyone unanimously said would never happen again. And a feat so incredible that although his OKC Thunder only had the sixth seed going into the playoffs, he won the regular season MVP. But then, in the very next season, Russ averaged a triple-double again. And yet somehow he finished fifth in the MVP race. The inconsistency I'm just the process was put on full display that I'm season. just saying. Can a player, regardless of his team's success, just put saying. up numbers so ridiculous that the league has no choice but to anoint him as the most valuable player? Well, according to Russ's 2017 season, yes. And if we're following this same criteria, Nikola Jokic has easily been the league's most valuable player this season. I've heard talks of Giannis winning another MVP, Steph making a run for his third MVP, Kevin Durant or Jimmy Butler being the leader in the race, but hardly anyone has mentioned Nikola Jokic being the most valuable player in the league this season. But all the numbers across the board point to the Joker as the league's most valuable player. In fact, so far, the season he's having isn't just the best among his peers. Jokic is having one of the best individual seasons of all time. Now, we're all familiar with the PER stat, an overall statistic of a player's efficiency and production. Yo, Jokic ain't really a household name yet. That's why, bro. Here's the charts of the top 50 NBA They always won't give it to the household PER. names. Here's Kevin Durant. Jokic's not here's really that big. Like, here's Giannis, he's not really a household name yet in the, uh, uh, in the United States. And here is Nikola Jokic. And if this spot looks almost unreasonably hot. I guarantee you, though. When Jamal Murray come back, they're going to look at the Nuggets a little bit more. That's the only reason why people not really looking at the Nuggets is because Jamal Murray still hurt, bro. And then Michael Porter Jr. is out. So it's like Jokic has to carry the load. So, I, but, that's because it is. Nikola's PER yeah, this season he's not a is 35.3. The current single season PER record is 31.9 set by Giannis two seasons ago. And the record before that was Wilt Chamberlain's PER of 31.8 back in 1962. In fact, here's the highest single season PER Michael Jordan ever achieved. Here's LeBron's single season record. Here's Kobe's, Magic's, Bird's, Shaq's, Kareem's. No player ever has come even close to the production and efficiency that Jokic is putting together this season. And if we narrow down the production to just offense, Jokic is still head and shoulders above everyone else. This season, Jokic has an offensive box plus minus of 10.1. The second highest offensive box plus minus in NBA history, trailing only Steph's 2015-2016 season of 10.4. The next closest player this season is Steph with an OBPM of 8.3. In fact, only nine players league-wide have an OBPM of even five. Everyone on this list will either be an all-star this season or a borderline all-star. And even these all-NBA talents aren't even in the same stratosphere as the Joker. So if this man is having one of the greatest individual seasons ever, why is no one talking about it? The man is averaging 26, 14, and six a game on nearly 60, 40, 80 splits. And no one is talking about it. Right now, the current MVP odds are in favor of Stephen Curry, followed by Kevin Durant and then Giannis. Jokic is down at fourth with odds that suggest he is far from the MVP. This article's headline doesn't even mention Jokic, like he's some sort of afterthought. And if I had to say why this is, I'd say it comes down to a few things. First, Jokic hasn't had a marquee performance this season. You know, that massive game that makes all the headlines and demands fans mm -hmm. and voters to reconsider their MVP hierarchy. Facts. Every MVP needs a marquee performance to really draw the masses and build their campaign. Facts. Second, and the most obvious reason, is that the Nuggets aren't doing too hot right now. With a below 500 record of 9 and 10, the Nuggets currently hold the Tell you, Michael Porter Jr. and Jamal Murray seeds so bad that most fans won't even consider Jokic as a frontrunner in the MVP race. 
Because if a player is truly valuable, shouldn't his team be winning the vast majority of their games? The short answer is yes. But the actual answer to that question isn't quite as black and white. Because the Nuggets are winning when Jokic is on the court and surrounded by competent teammates. So far this season, in the 14 games that Jokic has suited up, the Nuggets have outscored their opponents by a combined 48 points. In the five games that Jokic has missed this season, the Nuggets have been outscored by their opponents so by 62 six. points. That means that with Jokic, the Nuggets oh, are a nine. winning team with an average margin of plus 3.4 points. Without him, they're a losing team with an average margin of negative 12.1 points. Sure, the Nuggets are losing the at the moment, and they're far from a championship contending team. But without Jokic, realistically, they run the offense through Jokic. Atrocious. Recently, I asked a friend why people tend to downplay or downright ignore Nikola's excellence. And his answer was simple, but unfortunately, very true. His game is just boring. To the purest of basketball fans, the Joker's game is a work of art. He's brilliant. I personally love watching the guy play, and I'd even go as far as saying he's one of a kind. But to the average fan, Nikola's game is lethargic, slow paced, lacking all the high flying acrobatics and 30 foot bombs other stars put on full display every night. Nic Remember what they said about Tim Duncan? How Tim Duncan, Mr. Fundamental, wasn't flashy. He didn't give you the uh he, he didn't give you the behind the back pass or the no look pass or the one handed tomahawk. Look at Tim Duncan. One of the best power forwards in NBA history. I don't know. Maybe Jokic goes that route. Who knows? Nikola's excellence is rooted in his ability to break down the game to its simplest components and exploit the other Your team patience. with his uncanny ability to see two, three, four moves ahead. But it's this very simplicity that deters fans from giving him the credit that he is due. Tim Duncan dealt with a similar problem his entire career. Timmy was so technically sound that he didn't need to be fancy. He didn't need a 45 inch vert Mr. or Fundamental. any sort of alien like ability. He could dominate anyone with a handful of post moves, bank shots, and well time roll. And I promise I didn't watch this video. As y'all know, I do all my videos like live. I will add them to my list to watch them, and I watch them. So the this reaction that you're getting is a live reaction. Just to let you know. ...to the basket. The man's nickname was literally the big fundamental. And because of this, it took years and years for people to truly see the immense value in Duncan. Nicola will shred a defense for 35 points and 15 assists without even getting a foot off the ground in the process. The man will appear to be moving in slow motion and still make your best defender look absolutely lost. He will alter <laughs> a so dozen fat. shots on the defensive end without even getting close to blocking one of them. And you'll more than likely never see one of these plays on Sports Center or your favorite sports social media outlet. But when the vast majority of fans get their information Yo, and form their opinions bro. based on these short clips and highlights, it's no wonder that Nicola's impact, relevance, and dominance are undervalued. If you were able to somehow remove the hype and narratives from the MVP discussion, the race for the award would look something I blame like the league. this. And that's because this list is exactly that. Basketball references MVP tracker, which gives a very objective look I blame the, the league, MVP bro. race I at lie. the moment based solely the on the numbers. The only list where you'll find Jokic ahead of everyone Oh, they got Chris Paul top five. the numbers you've seen so far haven't swayed you enough, Jokic's excellence doesn't stop at the offensive end. Okay. With a defensive box plus minus of five this season, Jokic is leading the entire NBA on the defensive end by a massive margin. The next closest player is Draymond Green with a DBPM of 3.9 and then Giannis with 3.4. And believe it or not, Nikola's defensive box plus minus this season is the second highest mark ever recorded. I am not exaggerating when I say that Nikola Jokic is currently having arguably the most productive, efficient, and dominant season in NBA history. Now how's that for value? Man, real quick, bro. Like I was saying, I blame the league, bro. The league has tricked us into thinking that a player has to be flashy. Again, no look passes and all of that. That's the only reason why we're not looking at Jokic, bro. Because I, I and I'm going to be honest, I'm guilty of it too. I got Steph Curry winning the MVP. But you want to know why? It's, just, it's, just, it's the flashiness. It's like it's the no look passes. It's the shooting from like 35, 40 feet. 
is like, bro, it's it's just it's just electrifying. You feel what I'm saying? So when, so when you see something shiny, and then you see something not shiny right next to each other, you gonna automatically go for the one that's shiny. I'm just saying. But salute to Nikolai Jokic. I mean, he definitely going up. I'm just saying, bro. I'm just saying. We pay attention. You, we pay attention to what looks shiny instead of the ones that's not shiny. That's it. And then, I mean, again, like, I mean, the Nuggets not really doing too good. You feel me? And you got Michael Porter potentially out for like a a, a minute, a long minute, because he just had surgery. We don't have a timetable for when Jamal Murray gonna return. At this point, Jokic got to carry everything. So it's like, other than other than Jokic, who's going to step up? You feel what I'm saying? Like the 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 I don't, I don't know, I don't know. We gonna see. It's still like a like the first quarter of the season, so we gonna see. Thank you guys for watching, and make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. You know what I'm saying? Just kind of help me out. I love you guys.